Hey kids, it's Miss Sasha. Welcome back to art class. I'm super excited to be here today. Today we're going to talk all about emperor penguins, where they live, or their habitat, why they live where they live, what they need to survive there, and of course, penguin fun facts. Living things need water, air, and resources from the land, and they live in places that have the things that they need, like shelter, food, and space. So, do you think that an emperor penguin might live in a desert? Probably not. It's too hot for penguins there. So they have to live in spaces that have the things that they need, and they don't usually have to adapt to it because that's where they live. They live there for a reason. Emperor penguins are the largest of all penguins. They need stable sea ice in the Antarctica to survive. So penguins are carnivores. They eat only meat. And the sea ice provides the food that the penguins need for survival. They eat mostly Antarctic krill. And those are like tiny crustaceans. A crustacean is like a crab or a crawfish or a little shrimp. Though they don't have crabs, crawfish, and shrimp in the Antarctic. They have krill, which are tiny crustaceans. They also eat lots of Antarctic silverfish and tons and tons of squid. Penguins belong to the bird family, but they can't fly. They have black and white feathers that make excellent camouflage, and they have a special layer of feathers which helps to keep them warm. And those feathers are usually water resistant. They repel the water so it keeps it off of their body. They spend half of their life on the land and the other half swimming in the water. So here is our pictures. This is two emperor penguins and their little babies. When the babies are born, they're tiny and they're gray and they have really soft, soft feathers. So they have to stay close to their parents to keep them warm and safe. This is a penguin's feet. They have very big feet with really big claws so they can stay stable on the ice. This is a penguin that is shooting or darting through the water. The way that their bodies are shaped helps them to swim really, really fast. Here's a side view of the little penguin. Again, here's penguins and their babies. This is a bunch of penguins. That's why penguins need lots of space to survive. So in their environment, they have to have space. And here's another penguin, kind of like the penguin we're gonna draw today, okay? So the supplies you're gonna need today are a white piece of paper and a black crayon, orange, yellow, blue, and purple, which is an assortment of crayon. Now is a good time to stop your video and gather all of your supplies. Now that you've gathered all your supplies, I want you to put them in front of you. We're gonna do a little hand warm up to get our fingers and hands ready for drawing. Okay, here we go. Make a little fist. Maybe open them. Close them. Open them. Close them. And maybe you could do your fingers in a little roll. Almost like playing the piano really big. La la la. Okay. Maybe bend them. We wake our fingers up so they're warmed up, kind of like you do before PE, right? You do stretches, you warm your body up. So when you're doing visual art, you might want to warm your hands up. When you're doing movement art, you might want to warm your body up, your neck, your shoulders, right? Just gets everything ready to go. Okay, so let's wave our hands back and forth like windshield wipers. Good. How about wrist twist? You can go around, maybe forward and backwards and forward and backwards. How about ducks? One at a time, like they're talking to each other, right? Good. Now wave with one hand. Maybe wave with the other. Other, back and forth, maybe both at the same time. Forward, backward. Good. Wiggle your hands all out. Shake it out. Ooh, my hands are tired, but they're ready for working. All right, I want you to go ahead and get your black crayon. We're going to use simple shapes and lines just like we've been doing to draw our emperor penguin. Okay, there's lots of different species of penguins, but today we're focusing on the emperor penguin. Okay, look at his body minus his head. It's a nice 
big oval. So the oval is going to take up a good bit of the middle of the paper. We're going to use our black crayon to get a nice big oval. Okay? Watch. Make sure it's nice and big. Okay? The body, the penguin's body is adapted for swimming like we talked about earlier. Its body is streamlined or like aerodynamic, right? A penguin has a large head, short neck, and an elongated body. So here we go. We haven't drawn his neck yet. All right, his head is going to come off the top of his body and it's gonna curve around. Ready? Up and back down. How's that? Remember it has a large head, so even if your head goes up to the top, it's okay. All right, in his head, we're gonna draw a nice big triangle that's upside down for his beak. His beak kind of curves out, but we're gonna use a triangle to represent his beak. So I want you to put a horizontal line, nice and big, look, it almost goes from side to side. And we're going to make two diagonal lines to form a point to make his beak. Watch. Down, down. Now we have a penguin beak. Got it? In the middle of that beak we're going to put a little vertical line. Perfect. We're going to put two circles at the corners of his beak. We're going to make them as big as we can because we're going to put a little eyeball in there. It's really hard to see their eyes. They're pretty dark. So we're going to just kind of use our imagination a little bit for his eyes. Okay, watch. Big circle over here. Big circle over here. And we're going to put little eyeballs in there using our black. Look, there we go. Perfect. Looks just like a penguin. Got it? Okay. On the sides of the penguin's face, he has some beautiful colors, oranges and yellows. So we're going to do two curved lines from the eye to the bottom of the head. Watch. One on this side and one on this side. We're going to color it in in a minute. Don't go ahead of me. Got it? Good. Okay. Let's give him his belly. His belly, look, almost takes up his whole body. Look, it's big in the middle of there. You can see very little black from the front, right? So watch. We'll do a nice big oval in there, almost as big as the original oval that we made for his body, okay? Ovals inside of ovals. We've been practicing this for a long time now, doing shapes inside of shapes, okay? All right, so we're going to do his wings. Look how big his wings are. If they were down by his side, they almost go to the snow at the bottom by his feet. Okay, so they're going to be big curved lines. We're going to do two curved lines off the side of his body. We're going to start up here where his head met his body. Watch. Curve out. Curve out. It doesn't go past his bottom. See? You got it? Remember, they're symmetrical. They're the same on both sides. So whatever we do on one side, we have to do on the other. Okay? All right. So let's start a little bit below where our other, the top part of the wing started, watch. We're gonna curve down and make a little curve line at the bottom. We're gonna do that on both sides. I'm gonna start a little bit below, down, and I curve around. He's so cute. I love penguins. All right. Inside of his arms right here are his little flippers. There's some white in there. So we're going to make two curved lines in his flippers. 
Ready? I'm going to start about in the middle here, and I'm going to curve down. And over here. So, his little wings, um, instead of having wings like other birds, penguins have tapered, flattened, paddle-like flippers for swimming. So, other birds flap their wings to fly. Mm, the penguins don't do that, right? They use their wings for swimming. Each flipper is covered with short scale-like feathers. So his whole body has almost scale-like feathers, like a fish would have scales, but this bird has scale-like feathers. Penguins propel themselves or shoot themselves through the water, just like this one. They're very, very fast, right? And they do this by flapping their flippers, okay? So these are their flippers or their wings, okay? So let's go ahead and add his little feet. His feet we're gonna do in different little parts. So one section at a time. Here we go. He needs two, okay? On this side and this side, I want you to put a little curved line, okay? You got it? All right, each little curved line will have three little ovals. Look, one, two, three, or three little circles, whatever works. One, two, three. And look at these claws, okay? I'm gonna make three little triangles. Look, one, two, three. One, two, three. I thought their feet were orange when I first started look, talking about emperor penguins, but they're not, they are black. See? Good job, everybody. So the head of the emperor penguin, as you can see, it's gonna be black. He has, and he's got a black chin and throat, and on each side of his head, he's got some colors, like oranges and yellows, as you can see right there. So, watch me. We're not gonna color in the two curved lines. I want you to color in his head above his eyes. Good. Try to go around his eyes. If your eyes get colored in and they're all black, it's okay. You can maybe go back later and glue a little white circle on there. We're gonna go below his beak. Got it? All right, remember this is gonna be the white part, so don't color in the little oval. I want you to color in the big oval. Don't do his flippers yet or his wings. Take your time going all the way around. Penguins have really thick skin and lots of fat or blubber, like a whale. A whale has blubber, right? And it's under their skin to keep them warm in the cold weather. And that's just like a whale, although a whale is not a bird, right? But a whale also has blubber. So even though animals aren't from the same animal family, they can have some similarities too, okay? So you got his, all, his body all colored in? All right. Okay, let's go ahead. Remember, this is the white part, the little curved line that we did underneath. So the top part of his flipper is also going to be black. There's some penguin species that live on tropical islands, so they don't all have to live in freezing cold Antarctica. They might live on a tropical island, but they definitely don't live in the desert. We already talked about that. Good. Go ahead and color in your wings or your flippers. So the penguins have tightly packed feathers. They, they overlap or they go one on top of it, each other, almost like the shingles on a roof, right? If you do it the wrong way, then the water will get into your house. So they overlap to provide waterproofing and warmth. Those feathers are really important to the penguins in all that cold. I mean, look at all this snow, right? They don't have jackets like us. They can't go to the store and buy a quilt. Right? They have to have it on their body 
They have their quilts on all the time. It's called their feathers. Okay? All right. We've got that. We almost have them all colored in. All right, time for his little legs, right? His little legs, penguin legs, are short and strong, right? Their feet are webbed like a duck, right? They're webbed feet, but they have claws, big giant claws so they can get through the snow and the ice. Um, and their tail and legs are used for steering while swimming. So even though we haven't put the tail on yet, it's also used for swimming like his little feet. They walk slowly and they do not hop, though some of them uh, some penguins do hop, but not the emperor penguins because they're the biggest penguins. So I don't know that hopping is, is their, is their thing, right? Penguins are known for waddling and, the, and, and their feet, they walk back and forth. They waddle, 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 right? And sometimes they slide on their bellies across the snow and that helps them to say, to move faster and to save a lot, a lot of energy. So, um, no hopping, just sliding on the snow and waddling is what their feet are for. So let's go ahead. You see they're all black. So you can go ahead and color in all of his feet black. I did one little section at a time, right? The curved line, the three circles, one foot. He can't have one white foot and one black foot. Don't forget to do the other side. Perfect. I'll give you a minute to do that. Um, let's see. Penguins can swim like 20 miles an hour. So once they jump off into the water, they can swim for like 20 miles an hour. And they can hold their breath for like 10 minutes under the water if they need to get down there and get some krill or some squid. They can really hold their breath for a long time. And they're super fast so they can get away from predators, right, that may want to uh, get them. So they have to be able to be fast swimmers, right? Okay, you've got all your black on. Let's go ahead. We are ready to move on to adding some pretty colors to his body, just like these emperor penguins are. So I want you to get your orange. Go ahead and get an orange. You got it? Okay, stay with me. We're gonna do one little section at a time. Okay. His little beak, you can color his beak orange. If your beak is really tiny, that's okay. Remember, they're all different, just like us, right? Got his little orange beak. It's got some black on it. That's why I put a little black line in there. It's like the middle of his beak, okay? We're gonna color the top of the side of his face with orange. Maybe you do it darker at the top and you get a little bit lighter. We've talked about this before. Press light if you don't want it to be dark orange, okay? Because we're going to fill it in with another color, okay? Perfect. Now, since we have our orange, we're going to finish up with our orange. I want you to color in the top of his body. Nice and dark. And I went kind of down on the sides with the dark orange. Oh, you know what we forgot to do? We forgot to do his tail. Get your black again. I forgot about his tail. His tail is short and stiff and it's wedge-like, right? Remember, he uses it for swimming. It's a triangle. Whatever side you want to put your tail on, it's right above his little feet. It's a little triangle. And we color it in. It's really in the back of his body. Look, he kind of uses it almost like a little kickstand, huh? Look, you can't see it on this one because it's kind of in the back of his body. And there it is for steering by his feet, remember? That's how they kind of fly around in the water. All right, so we got our tail on. Okay, orange. After you've done it a little bit dark, then maybe you could press lighter and get down his body a little bit lighter, right? Perfect. When you're done with orange, you can put your orange away. Get your yellow. When they say the, the colors of the penguin are um, 
used for camouflage. A lot of times when they're swimming around in the water, the predators can't see them because they look like the water with the white on the top. And I guess the orange, it's so light that maybe it might look like something else that that predator's not really interested in, right? Or hungry for. Here's yellow. Let's finish coloring in his face right here. Nice and dark yellow, just like these guys, you see? Awesome. And his whole body is not yellow, just the edges are yellow. So over that orange that I pressed lightly with, I'm gonna do a little bit on the top of there, and I'm just gonna go down the edges of the penguin's body, see? He's super cute. I knew y'all could do it just by using all these shapes, right? All the things we've been studying lately. Okay, so our background. Let's go ahead and do our background. His background is in the snow and the ice, and I don't have any. Oh, look, here's some mountains in the background or, you know, big ice, nice big ice back there. So go ahead and get your blue. We're going to make some lines that go horizontal across our page, like he's standing on the ice, like, like these guys, right? Like this one. Um, blue and purple are cool colors, so we're going to use those to represent the ice because our paper is already white, so we want to be able to show that there's some ice or snowballs or snow drifts. So we're going to use blue and purple because those two colors make me think that it's cold outside. I wouldn't use red or orange, that would make me feel like it's hot outside, like I need to build a campfire. So we're gonna use blue and purple. So I have blue first. We're gonna do maybe a wavy line underneath his little body. Right now he's floating. He doesn't, he's not standing on anything, okay? Maybe do another line underneath that one. These are wavy lines. We're just using it for our snow or snow drift, right? A snow drift is when a lot of snow is blown up and sometimes it makes patterns in the snow that are really, really pretty. Maybe bumps, maybe waves, right? Okay, so we're gonna do a line that goes behind his wing, not through his wing, behind his body and across. Now it looks like he's standing on the snow. See, we can do a double line if you'd like. If you want to put another one in there, you can. You can put as many as you want. I drew those dark. So if I go back and do them light, then it makes it look like there's more snow, right? Starting to look cold on my picture. Good thing he has his feathers on. Okay. Perfect. I took my blue and I also with my blue, I made some little circles that I could pretend like are maybe snowballs or piles of snow, maybe some little dots here and there, right? Maybe there's a bunch by his feet because his big claws were kind of messing that snow up, right? There. Is it looking cold? While we have our blue, let's go ahead and make some mountains in the background. And the mountains in the background are pointy. Look at these big points in the back, right? So watch, I go from the side of the paper, maybe go up and back down like the mountains are in the background, right? Our penguin is in the foreground, our mountains are in the background. So maybe I'll put another little one right here. Maybe a little one that's even farther in the background. And I can even put snow caps on them if I want. All right. Go ahead and put some lines in your mountains because they're so tall and frosty. Okay? When you're all done with your blue, let's get our purple. We're going to do the same thing with purple because remember purple is a cool color. We're making it look even colder. So you might go back and add some purple snow. Some snowballs, 
looks like that. Maybe I'm coloring a little bit lighter with the purple. Maybe there's more snow in this little crevice. Good job, guys. You know, cartoons have been made about penguins. Have you ever seen Happy Feet, right? Mm, I don't think the penguins really can dance like Happy Feet, but they're used for a lot of different cartoons, right? They probably aren't dancing around the ice <laughs> like in Happy Feet, but that was a really cute movie all about penguins. Another good movie was March of the Penguins, which was a real movie about real penguins that talks all about what we're drawing here. Okay, so take your purple and let's go ahead and add some purple to our mountains, just like we did. Maybe some little snowballs on the mountain. And you can really add as much purple as you want, just don't put any on the penguin, right? Remember, those mountains are in the background. They're far, far away like these in the background. Okay. How's it looking? You know that these birds, these penguins, even though they're birds, they don't make nests like other birds do. They just kind of huddle together like these guys do to stay cold. That's how they keep their babies safe too and warm. They're down by their little feet. See this guy down here? He stays down by the feet, up under this little pouch of warm feathers. And they sit, the babies sit on the feet of the adult penguin. Isn't that cute? Good. Okay, so on mine, on the background in the sky, I made mine kind of like a sunrise or a sunset. And I just used orange and yellow because we already have it. And it looks really nice, right? So all I did was go across the back with the orange, kind of in a, almost a little ziggy zag line, right? Maybe across the top. I didn't color very dark. You see, I colored very lightly with my orange, okay? And then I filled it in with my yellow. So it looks like the, it's either a sunrise or a sunset, even though it's not it's very cold. There's still sun in the Arctic, in the Antarctica. It's just not bright and sunny like on a beach, right? So go ahead and color all that in. If you need to add more snow, you can, right? This is far, far away in the very far background. All right, kiddos, y'all did an awesome job making your penguins. Um, today was great. We learned all about emperor penguins and what they need to survive. We drew an emperor penguin by following some simple directions using lines and shapes that we've been practicing. Penguins are amazing creatures and they love and protect their family members. Penguins rely on the environment to provide everything that they need. I hope you enjoyed doing this project and I bet by using these simple lines and shapes you can maybe teach somebody else how to draw an emperor penguin in the Antarctic, right? I hope you'll have a great day and I'll see you next week.